So if you were working with Prime Minister Stephen Harper or uh, uh, Michael Ignatia for one of the, uh, let, let's stay with Harper because he, he presents a very stiff and straight, mm -hmm. it, it's not at all about his hair, I know, but <laughs> <laughs> he is pretty, until he plays the Beatle music or something, right, you know? Right, right, right. So for him to, uh, he could be as smart as anyone, mm -hmm. but for him to make me want to follow. Right. What's the trick? Well, I think that he has to connect more with his audience. Mm. There's a sense of distance between him and the people that he's speaking to. As you were saying about Obama, he really connects. And also mm. Michelle Obama, there's that sense of eye contact. Mm -hmm. There's that sense of using their voice, not just using the hard tones all the time, but using your voice to let people know that you care about them. Right. So uh, there is a definite difference between a confident speaker mm -hmm. and a nervous speaker, but there's also a difference between uh, us from the heart speaker. That's no right. matter what the topic, I That's could be right. talking to you about terrorism, uh, a war, mm -hmm. and if I can do it right, mm -hmm. I can make you care or at least see that's my right. side. That's right. That's right. And that's about finding out about what it's important for you also in that topic. Mm. Why are you there? Not just why are they there? Because once you figure out what's important to you, then people see that. People are, audiences are very, very smart. We can't underestimate them. And they can sense it, they can feel it, they can intuit it mm -hmm. when you are passionate about something and you care. And people like passion, <laughs> let's face mm -hmm. it. It's oh, very attractive. Sure, and, and they like goofs. They like I mean, goofs. If you just screw up on stage, sometimes it's a bit relieving. <laughs> you say, oh, <laughs> not perfect. But if you can admit it in a, with the, is that a good idea or not, or you just go over it and keep going? I, it depends on the situation. If it's something that's really obvious, then you can probably comment on it and maybe make a little lighthearted comment about it. If it's something that no one else notices, for God's sake, just keep it to yourself. <laughs> uh, what about pauses? I, I was at a funeral mm. recently, and uh, the first line of the uh, talk mm -hmm. was, it's hard to lose your best friend. Yes. And like we're all, we're into, he, he hasn't said anything about the best friend, <laughs> nothing. That's it's hard right. to lose your best friend. Everybody's like tearing up. That's right, that's mm -hmm. right. It's a, that's a really great opening. First of all, it says what everybody else is feeling there, mm -hmm. that he's really, or that person was really speaking to the audience because everyone was there because they had mm -hmm. lost this person. Right. And then to allow yourself to pause, to let it settle, and let people take that on board. And if you work with people who don't have any confidence, where do you mm -hmm. start with them and release your voice and so that they can dance to the joy of confidence? <laughs> to dance to the joy of confidence, I would say the first thing is, is to think about it in terms of behavior modification and also letting your body become used to the situation. So I say start by desensitizing yourself. Start by speaking at maybe a, at your church or at an office mm. meeting or start by you know, speaking even to just your family and friends. But once you start to do it, your body will suddenly say, oh, I did that and I didn't die. I'm going to be mm -hmm. okay. And then the next time it'll become more and more simple to do and sure. easier to do. And some people will say to you, I have nothing to talk about. I have nothing to tell you about me. Uh, if you're asked to be an after dinner speaker, mm -hmm. the response is, well, I'm not an expert on anything. So right. Why would I do it? Right. Well, everybody has, I think this is a, a misconception that people have about themselves. Everyone has something interesting and something mm -hmm. to say. And also something that you feel passionate about. And if you're in a room full of people and you've all come to, there to, for a common reason and a common goal, talk about that. Sure. Now, uh, do you do physical things be backstage? Do you breathe deeply? Take a Valium, yeah. <laughs> well, <I'm> shot a <laughs> bourbon. I'm not a proponent of the Valium or the bourbon, or the bourbon. Okay. because you don't have much control. Right. But one of, your, one of your true friends is the ability to take deep breaths. It calms the nervous system. It signals to your body that it's not mm -hmm. a dangerous situation. I also love some sort of physical activity because you, know, you have a lot of adrenaline that builds up in your body. And most of the time when you start to speak, mm. you have nowhere for that to go. Right, so integrate that right-left brain. Mm -hmm. uh, you were in Kosovo. 
Tell me what you did in Kosovo. I was in Kosovo. It was wonderful. I was actually there working with the National Democratic Institute, mm -hmm. helping to train women who were campaigning for the recent elections. And it was exciting. These are women who have not really been in politics, don't truly have a constituency, but they're trying to build one. And it's one of the most exciting places to mm -hmm. be right now in the Balkans, I think. I'm sure. Oh, what it's, an it's, experience. It's amazing. The Kosovar people are lovely and warm and kind, and it's it was an amazing experience. And empowering women around the world is always an amazing experience, I think, being it, of the distaff side. You how, and you know exactly what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. How wonderful. Yeah. So um, when you first gave a speech, mm -hmm. when you were 14 or something, in front of the school, <laughs> Your book report. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you had to do book report. I had to recite a poem out loud. Okay, that were you nervous? I think I was too. I didn't have the knowledge to be nervous. <laughs> I think we. I think we come sometimes mm -hmm. grow into our nervousness. I think it can be caused by some sort of event that happens. Something not so great happens when we're talking to someone. Right. But if it goes well. Generally, your body says, oh, I kind of mm. like doing this. Mm -hmm. This is it's sort of like what you do. You enjoy it, and you're here all the time. And I find that that's the main thing. Yes. I screwed sure. enjoy it. Well, sometimes I forget I'm on television, <laughs> which well, is apparent nice... to the audience, I'm sure, because you do have to remember a few things. But, you know, when you're engaged and you think, mm -hmm. then when you watch, you think, I can't believe <laughs> I said that. But... Apparently I did. But then, then it works. Mm -hmm. It works. So what next for you in the new year? Well, I'm very excited because well, I have a book coming out at the end of March, and that is a very, very exciting thing. It's going to be available on the website, and it's an e-book with a CD also. And what I like about this book is a lot of public speaking books, you, you get a book, mm -hmm. and what do you do? The book sits on the shelf. Mm -hmm. And you say, "Wow, I wish I would read that book. That would be yes. really great, and I could help it help you know cure my nervousness." This actually has a workbook aspect of it, so that after every chapter, there's a series of exercises that you do, and it sort of takes you through the process mm. itself. And you have the CD with it. Okay, so. and it's speaking like writing. Uh, uh, writers are not born overnight, as you mm. know. They have write and they write and they write, and one day you're J.K. Rowling. That's right. That's and right. so speaking, same. The more speaking, you do it, the easier it gets? The, the more you do it, the easier it gets and the more adept you become at it. Mm. It's a lot It's a lot like riding a bicycle or training for a marathon. Your body develops a muscle memory for it. Your body says, mm -hmm. oh, I know how to do this and sure. I can think and do this at the same time. Well, when it's over, I'm always euphoric. That's and I've done it. It's so weird. I think, well, when I say <laughs> I'll do it, I'm so mad I said I do it. Then I do it. Then I think, oh. You are so right. That's one. Th I tell people that all the time, and that's one of the joys that they don't recognize. When you do well, you get this uh, runner's high, this adrenaline yeah. rush, and you think, "Ooh, that was nice." That was hot. <laughs> exactly. I was good. Oh, nice to see you again. It was such a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you, Pamela Hart. Release your voice boot camp coming up. Uh, and coming up, if being highly organized does not come naturally to you, we meet two professional organizers who can aid your good riddance deficit. Stay with us.